Okay, and welcome back students who are taking financial accounting. And in this series of videos, we are working on the assigned homework problems from the digital study guide for chapter 10, the group B problems. Note, accounting is about understanding the concepts and then applying that understanding to the situation at hand. If you get the application aspect wrong, that is one thing and is easily remedied by watching someone else work the problem. However, if you don't understand the concepts, that is a whole other thing. Watching a problem worked out will not help if you don't understand the underlying concepts. Go back and study the text material again and watch the theory videos. If you still don't understand the concepts, then either email or telephone instructor to get help with that understanding. Right. We're working on 10-59. And again, we're accounting for various stockholders' equity transactions. So here it says the balance sheet of relaxation on December 31st, 2013 reported 650,000 shares of $2 par common stock authorized, 120,000 shares issued and outstanding. Paid in capital in excess of par has a balance of 310,000. Retained earnings has a balance of 140,000. During 2014, company completed the following transactions okay so one record the transactions in the journal and then two prepare the stockholders equity section of the balance sheet at December 31st assuming the company earned 74,000 of net income during the year okay so let me um, I know I'm going to have to pause someplace along here and um, uh, erase so just be aware of it I'll let you know when I do it and I'm also going to just write the transactions here all right I'm not going I'm gonna to try to squeeze it in and not have to erase so on 215 all right purchasing 5,000 shares of Treasury stock at six dollars par so I'm going to credit my cash because I'm paying for the Treasury stock right and it's 5,000 shares at $6 per share. So 5,000 times 6 is $30,000. Uh, so we're paying 30000 And we'll debit treasury stock for the 30000 Just that simple. All right, so now on March 8th, we're going to sell 1,000 shares of the treasury stock for $13 per share. Now notice the 13 is greater than the six, right? Right, so we're going to get cash because we're selling it. So 1,000 shares of 13 is $13,000. And we're going to credit, right? Now, because we're selling it for more than the par value, right? We're going to credit our treasury stock because we're getting rid of it, right? but we also have the paid in capital because we're selling it for more. So 1,000 shares at $6 per share is $6,000 that we're selling back into the marketplace. And the difference between the two is $7,000 for the paid in capital in excess of par. Right? Go back and watch the previous video. Um, Towards the end, I talk about, well, if this was, we're selling it for 13 and the par was 6, the difference is $5,000. I'm sorry, $7,000. Whoops. That was stupid. $7,000. Okay. And um, we're selling 1,000 shares, so 7 times 1,000 is 7,000. So that's how a different, uh, an alternate way in order to double check that your paid in capital is correct. But as I said, it's just easier to back into that number because debits have to equal credits. 13 minus 6 is 7. All right. So then on 928, declare and distribute a 5% stock dividend. So this is a stock dividend. It's not a cash dividend. On 116,000 shares of outstanding common stock, the market value of the common stock was $7 per share. Okay, so... Um, we have to figure out, uh, we're going to debit our retained earnings. So we're going to figure out how much we're taking out of retained earnings. So if we have 116,000 shares, okay, and it's a 5% uh, 
stock dividend, all right, and the market value is at seven dollars, right? That comes out to forty thousand six hundred dollars. So we're going to debit the forty thousand six hundred dollars to retained earnings. Now, obviously, um, we're going to credit our common stock because we're it's a stock and dividend. We're creating additional shares of stock, and since the market value um, uh, da, 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 is let's see here. Go back up here. We have two dollar par, okay, and it, we're selling it at seven. All right, that means we're going to have an additional paid in capital because we're selling it for more, right? All right, so uh, out of the forty six, you know, forty thousand six hundred, um, we're creating common stock, right? So in order to figure out how much in common stock, we have one hundred and sixteen thousand at the five percent at two dollars a par so that means we're creating an additional eleven thousand six hundred dollars in value of common stock right and of course the difference between the two forty thousand six hundred less the eleven thousand six hundred is twenty nine thousand dollars of additional paid in capital right and of course we could have gone and said in order to figure out additional paid in capital, if uh, if we're the market value is seven, and oops, and where the par is two, the par is two dollars. That's a difference of five. We could have gone and said 116 uh, thousand times five percent times five, and gotten the twenty nine thousand dollars that way. Okay, but easier to just back into, right? All right, so um, that's it for this exercise. Uh, let me take a look at the next one. All right, analyzing the stockholders' equity. What is the par value of the company's common stock? I'm going to do this in this video, all right? And then we'll be done with all of the problems. Uh, for chapter 10 and be finished off with chapter 10. All right, so uh, analyzing stockholders' equity. Columbia analyst reported the following statements of stockholders' equity for the year ended September 30th, 2014. So this is the statement of stockholders' equity. Right. What is the par value of the company's common stock? Okay, let's see here. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so what is the par value of the company's common stock? So common stock, and when we're looking down here, we have an issuance of stock of 5,000 shares, and the value is 16,000. So 16,000 um, divided by the $16,000. All right, divided by the 5,000 shares gives us $3.20 per share. All right, so uh, pause the video because I'm going to erase that. Okay, so that was relatively easy. You just need to be able to find the information. Okay, again, you know, issuance of the stock of 5,000 shares and the value of the stock is 16,000. So one divided by the other. Gives you the three dollars and twenty cents. Right. Two. What price per share did the company issue its common stock during the year? Okay. So, at what price per share did the company issue? So, we know our, we have sixteen thousand in common stock here, and we have an additional paid in capital of fifty six thousand. So this is the total value of the uh, issuance of the stock. So we're looking at $72,000, and we're dividing that by the 5,000 shares that were issued. And we take 72 divided by 5,000, and we end up with $14.40 per share. Okay, so that's number two, right? Um, number one was the par value, right? That's why we're only looking at the... $16,000. Right, 
you know, it's 5,000 shares, that stays the same. But number one is the, it's only the par value. That's the par value. But the issuance is what we're getting when we uh, uh, sell the common stock. And the, what we're getting is, is common plus the additional paid in capital. So it's the 16 plus the 56. And then divide that by the number of shares of 5,000. Okay, three, what was the cost of treasury stock sold during the year? What was the selling price of the treasury stock sold? What was the increase in stockholders' equity from selling the treasury stock? Okay. So when we look down here, okay, we have a sale of treasury stock. All right, so what was the cost of the treasury stock sold during the year? It's $12,000. What was the selling price of the treasury stock sold? Right. Okay, let's see here. Okay, um, I just quickly um, paused the video because um, when I looked at this and I went and said, okay, what was the selling price of the treasury stock sold? That's 18,000, right? The 6,000 here for the additional paid in capital plus the $12,000 in treasury stock, okay? Which gives us a total of 18,000. But when I looked at the solution, right? Um, the solution said 118,000, right? Which is wrong. It's only 18,000. I think that's a typo in the solution manual, okay? Just be aware of that. And then it says, what was the increase in stockholders' equity from selling the treasury stock? Well, the increase in equity from selling the treasury stock um, was the $18,000. Right, now four, what was the overall effect? What overall effect did the stock dividend have on stockholders' equity? Right, um, when you have a stock dividend, it has no effect on, stockhold, on the overall stockholders' equity. All we're doing is, is we're taking it out of retained earnings, right? And then we're creating either common stock or preferred stock, right? And um, the and the um, appropriate paid in capital in excess of par. Okay, so these are all equity accounts, right? So our overall stockholders' equity stays the same because all we're doing is moving from one to the other. It's no different than, and again, this is association. Okay, it's no different than your assets. Okay. If I have cash as an asset, and let's say I have $100,000 in cash, okay, well, my total assets is $100,000. Now, if I decide to buy uh, equipment, and let's say the equipment is $25,000, right, and I pay for it in cash, well, I reduce my cash to 75,000 because I'm paying for the equipment and I create a new equipment account. I've moved from one asset account to another asset account. My total um, assets still say still stays the same. Well, there's no different when you have a stock dividend, okay? You're taking out of retained earnings and then you're creating you're moving it to one of the more appropriate accounts, right? In the creation of additional stock. Of course, cash dividend is different, right? The cash dividend is taking it out of retained earnings and moving it to cash, right? So yes, having a cash dividend does have an effect on the total um, equity, right? Because cash is an asset. Right? Whereas retained earnings is um, is equity. Right? So just be aware that when you have a stock dividend, I mean that answer was just simple, no effect. Right? All of this babbling I'm doing is just so that you understand the thinking behind why there is no effect. All right. And with that said, um, you know we're done with all of the problems for chapter ten, and. Hopefully uh, you understood all of that. If not, go back and watch the videos and um, 
you know, as I was doing the, the remaining problems that, you know, and I mentioned this in one of the extras, one of the problems um, that, you know, this chapter is more about here's the concept. The more problems you do and the more you go back and revisit the theory behind it, the more you understand the, the theory and are able to apply it to uh, the particular problems. But you have to do the problems. No problem is, you know, problems are going to be similar, but they're not going to be the same. And the more that you do, the more you understand the overall theory to be able to apply it. It's a circular type of thing. Um, you know, here's... Here's theory, and here's the application. You start out uh, reading the theory, but you might not understand it, so you, you do some of the application, and then some of the theory falls into place, but you're not going to understand all the, uh, the theory just by the application because there's so, so much of a variety of applications. So you go back and reread the theory, and then you uh, understand a little bit more of the theory. You do more problems, you get a little bit more understanding of the theory. Read the theory again. Um, do more uh, problems, and it just goes circular to you get to a point where uh, you understand the theory in full and you're able to apply it in any situation. Right? And that's how you'll, uh, you know, that's how you gain that knowledge for uh, the exams or, you know, real life situations. And if you're still struggling with the concept of the theory, you know, yeah, we can only explain so much, and feel free to contact an instructor. But that's the, for this chapter in particular, that's the process you have to go through in order to quote unquote be able to get it. All right. So, with that said, um, we'll see you in you know, the next set of videos for chapter 11.